How do you go from a blank slate, mere ideas, to this in just five days? We're gonna to talk to the best in the business in the next 30 minutes. That's today's takeaway. Right, so here we are in, so, this is the heartbeat of the Enterprise Papers. Where we are. Uh, John Paradise, managing editor, Katie Goers, and you are a reporter covering two newspapers. Yes. Correct? So yes. Born and Sandwich. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, so John, tell me a little bit about the Enterprise Papers and the history, if you will. Okay, there's four Enterprise Papers, all four Upper Cape Towns, Falmouth, Born, Sandwich, and Mashpee. Uh, got its start in Falmouth. It, that paper's been around since the late 1800s. Mm. And the Huff family purchased the, the paper in the 1920s, and it's been family owned by the Huffs ever since. Wow, even to today? It, to today, yeah. No kidding. Yep, the publisher is Bill Huff, and his son John Huff is now working with the company. He's been with us for several years now. Excellent. So, so uh, when you look at a small family run business of any type, there are huge benefits, uh, especially when you're comparing it against large conglomerates, you know, large, and in this, in, this, in, in this instance, a large media organization. How do you, being a small family-owned business and newspaper, compare uh, uh, to those larger um, companies, those media companies? I think we compare very well. You know, what's, what's so nice about being working for a family-owned newspaper is that you know, the owner it's in the same building with you. you know, you're working hand in hand, you're interacting every day. So you're having conversations about what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, what he wants to see, what we want to see. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a nice, small, compact world, yeah. you know, working for the company. Are you, um, you have worked in your background, you've also, how long have you been here, by the way? Uh, over 20 years. Over 20 years. Yeah, this okay. is my first media job out of college, and I went wow. to school for journalism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what <laughs> do you love about working here? Assuming you do love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with that premise. Well, you know, working, you're working in the, work, I actually work in the community I live in. You know, I, I, I managed two papers. I managed the Bourne paper and the Sandwich paper. And I was hired here as a Bourne reporter when I was right out of college. So I sort of, sort of grew, cut my teeth in Bourne. And then I moved from Bourne, uh, from the Bourne paper to the Falmouth paper for a short time. And then we launched the Sandwich paper. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, I'd love to work for the Sandwich paper. So yeah. I, I've been with the Sandwich paper ever since. So now I'm managing both. You know, I live in Sandwich. I, I manage Sandwich. You know, I, I in that community. You know, I know the people. I know the, I know the places. And in Bourne, I've covered it for so long. I know the people. I know the places. Yeah. Um, that's what's it's so great to yeah. you know where I am now with this. That's great. Um, there are. We were talking earlier about the fact that there are two newspapers in Sandwich, as an example. Bourne. How many in? Yeah, there, there are two. Okay, two as well. Yeah. So we can safely say that you have pretty much two uh, small, smaller papers. But then you've got the Cape Cod Times. You have the larger, the, the big regional. Describe that competitive environment and pick a topic, whether it's reporting, whether it's from a management perspective. Um, how do you compete with those regional big guys? Well, I, I think on, on the reporting side, um, I have the, the benefit of just focusing on Sandwich and just focusing on Bourne, whereas the Times has to focus on the entire Cape. So I get to work just at developing very specific relationships in just the towns that I'm working in. Um, and I think that's a strength. I've been able to, over the, the last few years, build up very strong relationships. And um, I don't think that the Times necessarily has that. Um, I, I honestly have never felt competition with the Broadsider. But um, mm -hmm. as far as the Times goes, I, I think that's my yeah. strength. But competition is good. You know, yeah. it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you motivated. It keeps you, you know, sort of looking over your shoulder, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's been the, the media industry. You know, it went through a lot of tough years, and you know, the, the competition we're dealing with—they've—they've they've very because they're not family-owned. They felt 
they, they felt it a lot more than we have. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been a lot of cutbacks. Downsizing. Downsizing, cutbacks. exactly. And we're, we're growing. We added a weekend reporter, which, which we haven't had in decades, mm -hmm. you know, to help us with, with our weekend coverage. We've added, we've added uh, freelance uh, photography help. We've, mm -hmm. we've, we've expanded in this time. Yeah. Um, so let me talk to you about a story assignment. You know, here's Katie. And you work primarily out of your home, correct? Yes. Which is great. Uh, I do too, and there's nothing better. And you have a couple of kids, so that's a great thing. And who wants to be around the big bad boss all day long? <laughs> Actually, one of the first things I was told was that this is a dog-friendly and kid-friendly office. So I, I could bring my kids with me. I did smell poodle when I came in. <laughs> so, so tell me how a story gets created. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about your flow of the week, but let's talk about it as it relates to a story. How do you guys come up with a story? How do you get assigned it? Tell me about it, that. It, it can happen in a lot of different ways. Sometimes Katie comes to me with stories because, you know, again, she's developed her sources. Her sources will come to her. Or she'll, you'll be in the schools and she'll mm -hmm. come across something sort of cool. I mean, um, that's the ideal, is that yeah. I will pitch the story and, um, you know, John will say yes or no or, you know, this is where I want to see you take it. Um, but sometimes you also find stories that you yeah. assign to me. Yeah, we come across them in, in any different ways. And every Monday uh, we have a, a complete, um, uh, all four town uh, a, a sort of planning session okay. every Monday where everyone sort of talks about what they're planning, what mm -hmm. they're doing for stories. And So uh, you may say, love the idea, flesh it out a little bit more. It's not quite enough of a story, but if you can get me a couple of facts or a couple of something, then I'm going to buy it more. Mm -hmm. Do you turn down more than you take on? No, I'd say probably say yes it's more most. often than not. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes I'll say, it's a good story idea, but how about if you approach it this way instead? Mm -hmm. And how about if you talk to this person? Okay. And that's why we have the big meeting, because there's other people from other towns who might say, oh, hey, we did a story like that two years ago. And you might want to think about this angle to it. Or, Interesting. You know, th th things, things will happen like that, where reporters might know other people that, that, are, that Katie could talk to. Or, yeah. So give me an example of a story that you are assigned, and it is your, yours to chase down. Um, do you typically work on these for a week, or could they last several weeks in duration? Most of the time, it's about a week. Okay. Um, occasionally there's a story that needs a little bit more uh, investigation, yeah. uh, but more often than not, I get assigned a story on Monday, and I've completed it by Thursday. So can you give me an example of a story that you and John say, hey, this is it. We're going to do the story, and this is how we want it to be. And then by the time you finish it and you hit submit, if that's what you do when you are done Basically. and you're sending it in, how, how the story may have drastically changed. Can you give me a brief example of, of one? Or mm, I can't think of an example. I know we've had one you. recently, yeah. but yeah. I can't. Um... So what are examples of how they could change? What could cause the story to change? Well, I could be assigned a story, uh, and John will have one point of view. This is what I, the direction I want to see it take. But by the time I've talked to the people involved in the story, um, I may have come across a different fact or point of view that we didn't necessarily think of when the story was being developed. Um, so by the time I've written out the story, it just goes in a completely different direction. Or I'll even I'll call you to say, this is what I've come up with. I know you wanted to see it go <coughs> in this direction, but it's, it's gone somewhere completely different. What do you think about this? Yeah, um, and that's a collaborative effort between yeah, the we, two. We talk, and again, I, you know, I, I don't try to, s <coughs> I, I think what you're trying to say is, is you know, the, the, the idea of the story idea itself. Like what I was, you know, you're gonna be writing about, um, uh, you know, writing about the, the budget and sandwich. Mm -hmm. You know, and I say like, you know, why don't you focus on these four items? Um, and then you, you, you find out that those four items may be like, eh, you know, they're gonna be, maybe two of them aren't, aren't really working out. So yes. then you find like two others to add to it. Right. Or something could come out of right. like a meeting, for example, yeah. that we thought was gonna be something really mundane, but mm -hmm. it ends up being really a heated conversation at the table. I, I cover school committee. And um, oftentimes you look at the agenda and it can look like it's going to go one way, but then they'll spend an hour talking about something you really didn't think right. they were going to. Or a vote. Or a vote. Could become yeah. something different mm -hmm. than what you're looking for. So tell me, tell me your week. You guys start on Monday. We you start Monday with a big planning session. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we cut them loose. We cut the reporters loose. So how many people right. are in that planning session? Uh, there's three editors, or actually four editors, including the web editor. Um, the photographer's there. 
and all the all the reporters, which there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ish. Wow. For for the four editions. Yeah. And um, so that that meeting lasts anywhere from an hour to two hours because we're kicking around all these ideas. So you're bringing up ideas. So Monday, you cut them loose. Monday after that meeting. After that meeting. Yeah, you already said go. Go. And they're off. And you're smoking the cigar yeah, and yeah, having yeah. the whiskey in the office. <laughs> the scotch. On the yes, bottom the scotch. Here. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, so take me to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday year is your dead deadline day. Well, well Wednesdays and Thursdays happen? are my deadline. Are, are the deadlines? Um, so what you have to it's there's there's a there's sort of a rhythm to the week. Yeah. I check in with reporters. The reporters check in with me every single day, probably many times during the day, saying, Hey, hey, this person's not getting back to me. Hey, you know, uh, they canceled this meeting, or hey, I just found out about this news story. Because that's the thing. You plan your week, mm -hmm. but you also have to be flexible enough. Things come up. Yeah. Breaking news happens. It's just the way it is. Breaking news happened today as we You're walked in. Right. right. So you gotta you gotta have the flexibility to be right. able to drop drop that story and respond to this story. So you tell know. me about that adrenaline rush from your perspective, but I'm also interested in yours. Let's start with you. Thursday is looming. It does, and it does every single it week. It always comes up. Why is that Thursday here so quick? So you're, how many stories a week are you working on? Um, anywhere from, I would say four to, I think I've had upwards of eight. And then she does and the cop logs, some. which takes yeah. a lot. No the police kidding. logs take a lot of work. Police, wow. well, they take a lot of work, but not a lot of thought. I don't know. I, I mean, that sounds bad, well, but it's not. I know what you mean. Um, you know, it's pretty much And the, I appreciate you taking my name out. <laughs> and all those... Issues. Well, that's what's hard. I've actually had to write a few that are people that I know, or, uh, yeah. or relatives uh -huh. of people that I know, and, it, yeah. and that's hard. And you've got to you do have it, to though. separate like yeah. the, you've the emotion it. from the the work. But um, so four to eight, you know, yeah. stories a week. So how? Uh, talk to me about your run up to deadline. When sure. is, when are you done? When do you have to be completely done? Oh, what is it? Like I think seven o'clock p.m. latest, absolute latest on Thursday. Okay. I have to have every, and that's like. That's pushing that's it. That's cutting it close. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, Katie, where's your story? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I get messages like, are you out on that ETA? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Smiley face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Always. God for emojis. <laughs> right? Softens the blow every time. Right. Exactly. Like, oh, he doesn't hate me today. <laughs> right. Um, right. No, but, you know, Monday I get my list and I start kind of contacting my sources, reaching out to people that I need to get in touch with, and I try and get those done by Tuesday. Tuesday evening I really like to have that done. Sometimes it doesn't work out like that, and you kind of have to just be relaxed and, and go with the flow. Yeah. But um, then Wednesday and Thursday I'm writing. Usually Thursday I'm writing because, okay. you know, things come up. But, yeah. um, and that's always fun. I've got my toddlers at home and they love yeah. to let me work. Yeah, so, <laughs> good. <laughs> so what's your Wednesday and Thursday? Oh, my Wednesday and Thursday, I, uh, the, the planning is usually behind me at that point. Uh, okay. On Wednesday I start laying out the born paper. Okay. Because uh, the born paper has, a, uh, it goes to press uh, earlier in the day on Thursday. Um, 8.30 is when it needs to be out the door. Okay. Um, and then the sandwich paper can go as late as 10.30 or even later than that, depending if we're planning, if we're holding, because okay. selectmen meet on Thursday nights. Yeah. We often Ooh. hold. For but no, it's good. It's yeah. good because then, then we are, you know, we're the first to get to these stories oh, if we hold I the see. paper. Okay. And it was funny because it, it, uh, uh, over the years we've had reporters who did, oh, no, don't, don't hold for Thursday. Uh, but Teo Wolf right now, yeah. she's like, let's hold for Thursday every week. Wow. <laughs> she loves to hold. She loves that. Excellent. That very, she's very competitive when it comes to like, you know, getting those last minute stories. So we're holding almost every Thursday if the selectmen are meeting. That's like I'm, I'm excited that we now have, as reporters, we have the ability to post directly to the website if we have to. So if something comes out of a meeting um, on a Wednesday night and there's nobody like here to take care of it right away, I can just post something quick. Um, to try and beat out the competition. So let's talk about that because this is, you're very intuitive, Katie, because you are going where I was about to take us, which is the whole online dynamic. You know, your newspaper, and I love to buy the newspaper on Friday. I like to hold a newspaper. I like to, I like that. I like that it's like reading a book versus Kindle. Mm -hmm. I like that. But I, like most of America and the world, gets their news online. How has that changed your editorial calendar if you look at it? Oh, it's it changed it dramatically. It really has, to, it's a big shift, especially since we're, we're you know, we're, we, we are a weekly newspaper. Yeah. You know, it's usually like, okay, Monday, you start your day, and your, your week builds toward the Wednesday, Thursday, but now with the, with the website, 
it's every day you get a deadline every yeah. day. But it's different. It's a different experience. Like you're saying, you like to hold the newspaper. Yeah. A publisher likes to refer to the the you know, online. It's like you're you're leaning forward. That's your experience. Right. Where the newspaper is a lean back experience, where you take your time. You can read it backwards to frontwards. You can you can set a, set it aside. You can clip it. You can, you know, yeah. that's that's sort of the the newspaper experience. Right. Right. So we're we're trying to provide both experiences. You know, the lean forward and and the and the yeah. lean back sort of. What's nice about having the website too, though, is that we have the data on what stories people are actually reading, which can kind yeah. of help direct what you're going to focus on. And it boggles your mind mm -hmm. what people are reading on your website. <laughs> How so? Explain well, that. Well, you, you spend so much time on some of these bigger feature pieces. You know, you think it's going to be like, it's going to land like a boom. People are going to go, oh. And, and it, then it doesn't. And it's the little <laughs> news brief about the two teenagers who crashed their car into a utility pole mm -hmm. that that's about this long that gets like, you know, a thousand web hits or that feature piece and you're working on forever, for hours, it, you know, for days, it gets, you know, not even close to that. Like, so then so let me wow. ask you the question, what makes a good story? In the, in, the, uh, in the newspaper sense, what goes on the top of the fold? Well, there's, you know, you, you ask yourself, okay, what what he, what do I have in front of me for news for stories are going to affect the most people, you know, stuff that has to do with your taxes, stuff that has to do with your schools. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also looking for stuff that's different. You know, I've been doing this, like I said, 20 years. Yeah. Okay? I get so excited when something different comes up. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, one story. Uh, your, your, Bananas at the rotary. Your your, your Fruit Loop story. Yeah. Uh, the, the rotary yeah. there. It's <laughs> yes. I'm like that is. Oh, I was so excited. That's yes. such a good story. You yeah. know. And that one actually did do well it though too. It did very well it did. because it's got the the quirkiness mm -hmm. that, that yeah. I think people online are looking for that quirkiness. So quirkiness, um, something about me. You know, something, I mean, I mean. Greg Anderson? Yeah, something about Greg Anderson that is a surefire hit. Um, but something that hits my neighborhood. Yeah. Hits my, um, my, my children, my taxes, all of that. Um, let's talk a little bit about the fact that you work in the town in which you uh, live. So uh, I'll just pick somebody. I was going to pick a selectman. We got a big selectman race coming up, but we have, um, you know, Bud Dunham. We have uh, Doug Lapp. You know, these very visible, very, um, uh, you know, their um, their job is so important in town, and much of what they do is scrutinized. But whether you do or not, I don't know. Personal relationships. You're standing there getting tomato soup next to Doug Lapp at Stop and Shop. Yeah. But you just wrote a story that he may not like or Bud may not like. Oh, How do you balance well, that? It's, it's, it's interesting, especially when it, I think when it comes to like the town, the town manager and his assistant and the, the, the police chief, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I've had conversations with like Bud. And mm -hmm. I was like, look, you know, you're a professional. I'm a professional. We're both doing our jobs. There's going to come a time where I'm going to have to be critical of you yeah. and something you do. I'm just doing my job, you know. And if, if if they get if they get angry with me, you know, they say you shouldn't have been. They're not respecting me as a as a as a professional. Yeah. You know, so I, I try to have those conversations. Have you ahead had of time. those times where someone's gotten up in your grill and said, "Not cool." Yeah. Well, not not Bud. Uh, right. It's, but it, but it's, it's happened. You yeah. know. But you know, it's it's, it's you're going to run to that. It's typically somebody who's like not, not a town official. It's typically someone who's in a story. Um, okay. Like a you know sort of mentioned like at a meeting a town meeting says something and you quote them what the hell did you quote me in the page I'm looking an idiot now I, yeah you know it's like you're in a public meeting and, you, and that's what you said that's you know? right that's right you know, that's so it's funny uh, trips to the grocery store are always an adventure because you know yeah <laughs> my wife is like oh god <laughs> <laughs> he, he left for milk a half an hour ago twenty you know right an hour ago he's still not back yet oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, Talk to me a little bit about um, the balance between, you know, uh, uh, we've all been talking about fake news, and fake news is is a hot topic today. Talk about things that are trending on Google. Mm. But there's journalism, and then there's like, is that journalism? And the blurred line, and John, you and I have talked about this, you know, uh, off offline before, that blurred line of social media 
kind of, you know, broadens that um, that blurry line from there's the Morrow and Cronkite, the journalistic integrity and the things that we hold true in the world of journalism to I'm a guy that lives in town. I think I'm going to just write something and post it and call myself a journalist. Are you challenged with that dynamic? And if so, how? Yeah, yeah. I think people have to be reminded they have to be careful where they're getting their news. Mm -hmm. Well, now, and as a reporter, I think it makes you work extra hard to make sure that your sources are correct and that you're writing factually and not based on your own opinions. Well, and, and that's the thing. We have a staff here. Uh, we have, we mm -hmm. have four editors. Well, so first of all, we have the, we have the reporters. And then we have the copy editors who are double checking the reporters, you know, content. There's uh, the editors making sure that you know things are happening the way they're supposed should be happening. Then we have a publisher overseeing all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's lots of steps, lots of checks and balances to make sure that we're doing as fair and complete and as accurate a job as possible. You know, uh, whereas you know, social media is social media. Right. So there's a cautionary message to viewers and readers to. Um, to be careful what you read, be careful what you believe. It's kind of oh, like always. I've got some strange diagnosis. I'm going to go on WebMD and yeah. and uh, Google, and I'm going to find out that I have three days to live. Yeah. When in fact, I just happen to read you the wrong the website. You have the flu. And, and, I have the flu. And, and, exactly. And be yeah. honest with you. All right. You know, Joe Smith living down the street, who's got a, a blog. Uh, they could he could move in a year, two years, and then all of a sudden, oh, it's gone. The enterprise has been around since the late 1800s, yeah. we're not going anywhere. Right. You're going to be right. getting your news from us for a long time. Yeah. It's not just a, boop, hey, I'm moving out of town. Yeah. Or, hey, I've lost interest in this. I'm going to move on to another project I've got. Let's kind of end this with what is the, give me some misconceptions that people have about your newspaper, and, and, and maybe not necessarily the same, which are the born papers, but kind of the, 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 the hometown newspaper. What are some of the misconceptions that people have about what you do? Have fun with this. <laughs> that it's easy? Because <laughs> yeah. it's not. Yeah? No. It's, it's a lot of work goes into this. Mm -hmm. Every week. And one thing I say, it's like, well, I, I, one thing I, I'll, I'll tell people, the best thing about this job is that every single week, you start with a clean slate. Yeah. You know, blank page. And I tell people the thing I hate most about this job is that every damn week I gotta start with a clean slate. <laughs> I gotta yeah. start from step one. Yeah. Every week. That's hard. Yeah. That really is hard. You know, and right. you, you're trying to come up with, with interesting ideas for stories and good visuals and stuff that's gonna keep people reading, you know? Yeah. That's that's a lot of work starting from square one every single week. And and thank God we have such a good staff. Oh, I have a lot the people are <laughs> what's going to make it or break it. Exactly right. And, um, and yeah. consistency. How long have you been with the paper? It'll be three years in April. Yeah. April, yeah. Yeah. See, and that's, I, I mean, you, you have the consistency of the, the okay. newspaper, um, but it takes a different type of breed of person. I mean, when I worked in television news, it, it was like that adrenaline rush the deadlines were looming, your story could change, you know, there was always something going on, but you are essentially starting with that clean slate, and that can be daunting. Yeah. Um, so the hard work is a misconception. Um, what else? What? Well, I, I don't know specifically about this paper. I don't, I don't live in town, but um, I know with my local paper, I grew up kind of thinking, oh, it's just to talk about the Girl Scouts and, you know, what, Joe Smith down the street is doing, and it's not always interesting. But having actually now written for a local paper, that's not true at all. You know, there's a lot of really great stories that people in town have to tell that you might not otherwise know about if you didn't have reporters telling them. Yeah, and I think another misconception is we're, we're a bunch of old guys putting out a newspaper. It's mm -hmm. all the young hip folks doing the online stuff. But interesting. Look at Katie. <laughs> she's yeah. not an old fogey. I know. Well, <laughs> I may be. Yeah, she, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> gray haired beard over here is you know, not that young. Come on, it's a hip I gray know. beard, right? <laughs> um, that's, I mean, that, that is definitely a perception. You yeah. know, I mean, who, who is reading online? Probably it seems like the, the young hip ones are posting and reading and understand it. Um, but when you are cracking open a newspaper, you know, that perception of, you know, who's behind it. Um, 
I think a lot of people have been surprised when I talk to them on the phone or write them an email and then I show up in person and I'm just like, hey. Yeah. Uh, I actually had um, somebody, uh, a high school administrator, first day walking in there, she greeted me and said, oh, you look like you should be enrolled here. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Because he went over to a nursing home once <laughs> and <laughs> they said the same thing, which is... You look like you should be enrolled <laughs> here. Aww. You guys, I mean, th this, is quint this is quintessential Cape Cod um, living. You know, that you have a tempo and a, and a rhythm that you set with this, with this team every, every Monday. Um, and you guys do a, a, a really nice job. Um, I, I do want to, and maybe Payson, you can get a close up on this. We are on Cape Cod in February, <laughs> and she's wearing open toed. My Burks. <laughs> the Burks, <laughs> which is, that is cool. That is like Cape Cod, and um, you know, that's awesome. Um, thank you guys so much yeah. for this.